Hello everyone, welcome back to another BME Korea video. Today, I am finally sharing my day in the life with you as a biomanufacturing technician working in healthcare. For those who are new to the channel, welcome! I have a high quality BME playlist here and I've shared many tips about finding jobs and the BME career. And if you happen to want to work in a biomanufacturing lab, I've already talked about how you can find an entry-level one in this video, so make sure you check it out. And for channel old friends, you probably remember that it took me four months to find this job after graduating from grad school in August 2022. I started off as a senior tech because I have an advanced degree, but I did start with a less desirable shift as a newbie, which was Tuesdays to Saturdays. I've been working in this place for two years now and I'm fully trained on the whole processing line and I think it would be a good time to share my experience. And just so you know, all the footages are recorded throughout the last two years while I was working here in case you wonder why I or the season look different. If you find this video helpful, please consider like, subscribe, and comment the questions that you may have and I do oftentimes answer your questions. And before I get into any of the lab stuff, I just want to give you a high-level introduction about what my lab does and what is my role. So my lab is under a cellular therapy organization and the organization brings together physicians and faculty across medicine and engineering to develop cellular and biological therapies for autosome, uh, cerebral palsy, stroke, multiple sclerosis, and related brain disorders through transplants. And my responsibilities as a senior manufacturing technician include strictly follow SOPs, using complex lab techniques and medical devices under a highly regulated GMP environment to manufacture our product, which is a cellular therapy product for transplant patients. And with that out of the way, let's get started. I bike to and from work most every day as long as it doesn't rain, and I'm fortunate enough to live very close to my workplace. So my current shift is from 8.30 to 5 Mondays to Fridays, but when I first got hired as a newbie fresh out of school, my shift was the same time but Tuesdays to Saturdays. So in my experience, newbies usually get the less desirable shifts, and that's how I and a lot of my colleagues got their first jobs. I really enjoy my bike route to work. There are amazing views across most seasons of a year. Flowers bloom everywhere in springtime. The whole row rests in the cool shade beneath a canopy of green leaves in summertime. And the row shines with golden leaves in the autumn breeze. Plus, I can also kick in my daily exercise while saving about $80 monthly parking fee. After I get to the office, I will quickly put away my stuff in the break room. And before entering the lab space, we must put on a lab coat and change into our own designated clean shoes. By the way, if you walk a lot, I highly recommend this type of nurse's shoes. They are designed in such a way to relieve pressure so your feet won't feel tired. And as you can see here, this is the changing area where all the lab coats, shoe bins, or shoe covers, and related supplies are located. Okay, I'm about to perform my morning startup routine. The first thing I do is to open all the hoods and turn on all the lab equipment. We have six hoods in here and numerous lab equipments to be turned on. The whole startup process usually takes me about an hour. In fact, for a long time, I was the only person on the first shift, so I had to do all this by myself. After about eight months or so, a few more people joined the morning shift, and I had help since then. At this point, all the equipment are turned on now and I'm ready to start the first part of my morning routine. So, the morning startup includes three main parts. 
which are sanitizing the BSL hoods, generating daily supplies batch record, and performing daily equipment quality control, or QC. For sanitizing the hoods, we use a double cleansing method. First is to wipe down all the interior surfaces with a diluted bleach. Close the sash to let it disinfect for 10 minutes. And then wipe it down again with the 70% isopropyl alcohol. After I bleach all the hoods, then I will start Equipment QC. Lab Equipment QC is the process of ensuring that all lab instruments and devices consistently perform according to defined standards and specifications. So what I will do is to conduct tests to assess whether equipment operates within acceptable limits, often using control samples or test materials. Now I'm about to do the hematology analyzer QC. These are the control samples, so I just need to make sure the results of the control samples are within the specified ranges. As I mentioned before, our lab is highly regulated and the purpose is to consistently produce high quality products in a controlled environment to ensure product safety, purity and efficacy. And each piece of equipment has its own QC documentation record. So after the test, I will sign on the record. There's a golden saying in the GMP world, if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. I'm generating a daily batch record right now. All the supplies we'll be using for the day are in this cart. And I will input the information on the supplies card, such as manufacturer, lot number, and expiration date. We'll also implement a two-people verification method to ensure accuracy. Usually, my colleagues and I will rotate by day to create the batch record. So this time, my colleague creates the record and I am the verifier. So what I'm doing right now is verifying the record against the supplies in the cart to make sure what's on the record matches everything in the cart. Okay, that's a high-level review of my morning lab startup routine, and now the lab is ready for processing. And by the way, I really appreciate there are actually windows, and large windows in this lab, and the nice views outside. I know not a lot of labs have this privilege. As a senior tech, my main responsibilities can be broken down into three parts. My main responsibility is to work on the product manufacturing line. Now, let me start with that. However, I won't be showing the full workflow due to proprietary right. At the beginning of the day, we'll find out what stations we'll be working on for the day. So this is our lab PPE requirement, gloves and sleeves without exposing any skin before going into the hood. So a unit like this has to go through a sequential stations from initially in a bag to eventually a cellular therapy product to be cryopreserved in the freezers. So this is a device to separate the blood into different compartments in this storage kit. So this is a negative ADC freezer, which most labs use. So this is the final stage of the product line. So I will first take the product out of the pass-through, place it in the biohazard bin, and safely transfer it to the freezer room. We store the final products in this type of freezer, which has a fully robotic storage and retrieval system for cryopreserving high-value cell samples. I don't know why, but I like to watch the vapor releases from the vent. It's so therapeutic. Okay, it's finally lunch time. Depending on how busy the day is, generally I can eat lunch either a bit before or after noon, which is about 4 hours from the start of my shift. There's a really nice lounge area in the building, so I'll usually eat my lunch there.
Alright, that pretty much concludes the product line work. Here comes to the second part of my responsibility. There are three advanced stations for seniors, and I am responsible for potency testing. Unlike the product line work where I work with others and we do a couple of processing rounds in a day, the advanced stations are independent and it usually takes people all day to complete the testings. So, to put it simply, potency testing is a critical process used to measure the biological activity of a therapeutic product to ensure it delivers the intended clinical effect. It's particularly important in biologics, including cell and gene therapies, where the product's effectiveness must be verified before use. And I just want to be clear, I am not involved in any of the R&D for this product, nor do I analyze the results or make any decision in any matter. All the protocols in my lab have already been developed decades ago and revised by doctors and scientists if ever needed. And my role is to strictly follow them. And that's basically what it entails in a technician role. I perform the tests based on protocols and quite often not knowing the full research scope behind these tests or how the researchers analyze the results. And the last part of my general responsibilities mainly involves administrative tasks and ancillary testings. Administrative tasks are such as filing papers, triaging completed files, reviewing data, and data entry. And for ancillary testings, it includes blood typing, aliquoting samples for potential subsequent testings, and freezer quality control. So we have to measure the nitrogen level, clean the freezers, and back up data on a daily basis. And lastly, I just want to share my thoughts about this type of job. Um, let me start with the advantages. So first, it's very hands-on and keeps you on the move. The days literally fly by so fast without you noticing it. And second, this type of job is usually not very challenging, and I guess it depends on if you view it as a challenge or not. But in my opinion, once I am done for the workday, I am completely done. Unlike some other jobs where you may bring work thoughts to home. So in that sense, I think it's an advantage. And lastly, the career stability for this type of job is very high. I think this may be specifically applied to the healthcare sector. I've heard that my workplace during COVID time, the organization has never laid off a single employee who were in this role or a similar one. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the disadvantages. First, this type of job is very manual, and there are two disadvantages associated with that. First, it's not intellectually challenged. I soon reached a point where work is just work and I no longer feel any sense of achievement in what I do. And secondly, there comes to a point when manual tasks like this become very taxing to your body as you get older. And unfortunately, I've started to feel that. And the potential damage it could do to your body when a job involves significant repetitive motions. And lastly, I personally think that the skills I acquired are not very transferable because all these skills are highly specific to biomanufacturing in healthcare or biotech. So it's really hard to change roles or break into a different industry. So what do you think? Would you still want to work in a biomanufacturing lab? Let me know what other questions you have and I will see you in the next one.